Hi, my name is Kev, and today I'm going to be talking about the symptom of psychosis, and more specifically, my personal experiences with that symptom. Um, it's important for me to relate that the symptom of psychosis is um, very um, unique to the individual. Everyone experiences it kind of differently. Although there may be some common threads, um, such as seeing particular things, they may mean something very different to the, the person, each individual that is seeing them. Um, so my psychosis um, has changed and developed over the years. It started when I was 10 and now I'm 50. And, um, and I'm about 15 years into recovering from uh, my disorders. I, my current diagnosis is schizoaffective. Um, which is a combination of schizophrenia and bipolar 1. Uh, my bipolar 1 is depressive type with rapid cycling and mixed episodes. Um, I also um, am coping in my life with uh, CPTSD, which is complex PTSD, often called childhood PTSD. And that is when uh, someone experiences trauma over and over again, um, usually since childhood. And that p plays a lot into my psychosis. Um, and I also <laughs> struggle with inattentive ADD. I lose track of my thoughts a lot. And uh, so thank God for um, my editor, Kayla, who can um, put my thoughts in order better. <laughs> Okay, let me take a sip. I came to the beach today because my psychosis um, causes me to be scared and hypervigilant, and more so when I'm indoors, in houses, in buildings, than when I'm out in nature by the ocean and in the woods. So I'm actually sitting by the uh, by a river um, and it just makes me feel more safe to talk about these issues. Um, I remember the night I first experienced psychosis. Um, I have to prelude you into what led into that. Um, I, I was up to 10 years old. Well, the year that I was 10, um, I went through two different instances of sexual abuse uh, by strangers, two different strangers. Uh, in one case, I was led off by a stranger from an event, and another case was at a summer camp. And um, it was after the second event and I came home that evening and I couldn't tell anybody about what happened. Um, growing up, uh, my dad had a lot of heart issues and I didn't really understand them. And the information I was receiving was that if he got upset, he could die. And that weighed heavily on me. And as I was going through these hard emotions of sexual abuse, um, I couldn't say anything about him. And after the second instance, I came home and I was up in my bedroom. Uh, I shared a bedroom with my three brothers in the attic. And uh, I was up there alone because it was my bedtime. And I just started to hear this noise. It sounded like lots of different instruments trying to be tuned. Kind of like when you go to a symphony and before the show you hear all the instruments tuning. And I kind of walked around the room and I didn't know where it was coming from. And I was a little scared. Uh, but I, I thought maybe it was a car outside or someone turned some music on downstairs. And um, But after a couple minutes the music started to get louder and louder and it got so loud that I was very scared. It was so loud that I imagined that people could hear from blocks away. And um, I remember being huddled down on my hands and knees in the fetal position, 
cupping my ears trying to stop the sound and it wasn't doing anything. And it reached this huge crescendo and, um, and then stopped and it was silence. And there's a, there's a Beatles song called A Day in the Life. And at that very end of the song, you hear these instruments, chaotic instruments that build up and build up and build up and stop. And it's a lot like that song. I'll put a link to it down below, to that Beatles song. Um, and for years, I could not listen to that song um, because of the ending. But all this noise was just going and going and it stopped. And then I looked up in the room uh, the shadows were saturated. It wasn't darker, it's just that the dark parts of the room were darker. And um, I would see, I would be looking here, and right here, or right here, I would see these shadowy figures standing in my room. But when I looked at them to confront them, and it would only be an inch, they would disappear. And I was really scared. And I ran downstairs and I felt like I had seen these malevolent demon type things and all this noise. And I went down to the family, family room, which I was supposed to be in bed. And I was like, what was that noise? And, and every, no one knew, everyone was sitting around watching Johnny Carson. And uh, no one knew what I was talking about. And they were like, you know, get back upstairs in the bed. You don't know what you're talking about. And so there was just a huge noise. There's no way you couldn't have heard it. Everyone in the block must have heard it. And they just said, you know, nothing happened. There was no noise. We were just watching here TV. And so I remember thinking, and they told me to go back upstairs to bed. And I remember thinking I had to go back up into that room where I saw that demon. And, um, and I didn't want to upset anybody. Um, at the time, I was very close uh, with my grandmother, and uh, I was kind of—I couldn't. The, the household was so busy that I was—I sought out attention from my grandmother, and she was a very religious person and a Roman Catholic, and she would often talk to me about biblical things and about how, you know, the devils and demons are real, and and she would even when I asked her to, she would speak in tongues, which to me was like magic. And she taught me about, I didn't tell her that I saw demons or anything. As, as time went by, days went by, I would see them, demons. Uh, I called them shadow people at the time. And I would see them standing in corners of rooms and watching me. And I could look right next to them and see them in my see them in you know pretty good detail in my peripheral but as soon as i looked at them to confront them they would disappear and and it was very scary to look at them uh it was almost preferable to ignore them and pretend that they weren't there um i won't say that it happened all the time everywhere i went it, it usually happened when i was indoors and i was at home at my home and uh, in my room, in my living room, in the basement, and um, very rarely would I see them outside of the home. Eventually I started seeing them uh, at school and bus stations and things like that. And they never attacked me, but I could feel their, their evil, that they were just waiting for me to be weak, and then they would attack. And speaking of that, my grandmother will often talk about how faith can stop any devil or demon. And, um, and so that's what I dove into, uh, working on my faith. And I remember walking to school and talking to the devil. And I would say, devil, you give, you, give, give it your best shot, but you can't break me. My faith is so strong that it's like a shell. You can't touch me. And I believed that these things were very real because I saw them physically. So there was no question to me that there was a heaven and a hell and devils and demons and they were at war. Um, so talking to the devil 
wasn't strange to me because I knew he was there and he could hear me. And I would just egg him on and because I just felt like my faith was very strong at the, at the time. Um, I also would have this feeling that I didn't see it, but whenever there was, when I was stressed out, um, when I was stressed is when these symptoms would, would um, happen more. And I was often stressed as a kid. I was going through a lot, um, through not just the sexual abuse, but I was going through um, a lot of other struggles of loss and um, things like that. And um, so I was often stressed and um, so in addition to the shadow people, um, I would have trouble opening doors um, when I was alone. When I was alone and I had to go through a door, I could feel the evil presence of a devil behind it waiting for me. And this was so strong, and it, it was only at night. Um, during the day, I felt more safe um, when things were lit. And, um, but when there's, at night, and there's shadows and things like that, I would get very scared. And I would, I would not open my bedroom door. Um, for even if I had to pee or, or, or whatever, I would pee in a bottle and I would just, I was scared to death to open my bedroom door at night that there was a devil on there. And that went into my uh, adult years. Um, at night, I would lock myself in the room and I would not leave until the sun would rise. Um, because I just felt like if I opened the door, the devil was gonna be there. Um, so when I was 10, you know, I started seeing these shadow people. I started um, really getting involved in spiritual warfare and fighting against demons and the devil in secret. Um, I couldn't tell anyone. I didn't think anyone would believe me. I was afraid that I would get locked up forever. And uh, I was also training to be an altar boy at my church. Um, as my teen years went on, I ended up getting kicked out of Sunday school uh, because I was questioning a lot of stuff. I was raised Roman Catholic and you go to these classes called CCD. And um, everything that they would bring up I would question and I'd, I was very dramatic about how important everything was and overly so and I don't think these CCD teachers were ready for me. Uh, I eventually got expelled. And uh, shortly before getting confirmed as a Catholic. And that really upset my mom because she's a devout Catholic as well. And she went and talked to the church. And they decided to um, confirm me as a Catholic. And um, I, my kind of my spiritual warfare was a very personal thing that I didn't talk about to anybody. And um, as I went through years of kind of um, dropping out of school, going into foster care, um, going into homeless shelters, and struggling with my mental illness, shadow people were, were there, but they wouldn't interfere too much. They would just scare me and I would always be hyper vigilant. And, um, but I was in survival mode anyways, you know. Um, it didn't dominate my life. And I wasn't, I kind of was giving up on the war. <laughs> and uh, because someone, I, I worked with a guy once and he was a born again Christian. And I told him, I said, when I grew up, I used to say, devil, do your worst. And, uh, and I'm strong enough to take it. And he pointed out and he said, you said that to the devil. And then you ended up dropping out of school, going into foster care and then through homeless shelters and you really had a hard life. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, that's a good point. And be careful what you, uh, who you pick a fight with. Um, uh, as years went on, the spiritual warfare kind of fell into the background. And um, when I got diagnosed 
um, with psychosis. I originally was diagnosed with bipolar one with psychosis. And um, I began working with a therapist on um, learning to cope with my psychosis. And one of the things that I, she had me do was confront these shadow people that I would see. And I would draw them a lot. I have lots of drawings of, of shadow people made out of scribbles. And because to me, they look like dark scribbles that were constantly moving and shifting and always in a kind of downward motion. And um, So I finally, in a therapy session, you know, um, we decided that I was gonna confront these demons, which was very scary to do. And um, I looked it right in the eye and it didn't disappear. And I just yelled at it, what the fuck do you want from me? And it disappeared. And uh, since then, I don't see them very often. Um, and my faith is very different. Um, I'm, not, I'm not battling the devil. I don't know, my belief system is very unique to me. Um, it's not a Roman Catholic or it's barely even Christian. Um, but because of kind of my experiences in my youth as the spiritual world being very physical and touchable and interactable, um, I relied a lot on faith to get me through the things. And, um, and wishes. And wish to not be in this situation and pray to be saved. I did a lot of praying to be saved in different life or death situations and um, abusive situations. And I made lots of wishes. And I grew up really believing that at some level magic is real um, in I find that in my adult life in recovery um, it disturbs me and I grieve the fact that magic isn't real um, which is kind of where my psychosis is today. Um, where I don't see shadow people, I don't see demons anymore. I do hear things now and then. And they're the same things I've heard since I was a kid. I would hear voices um, that sound like they're coming from the other room, yelling, into, yelling to me and saying very derogatory things. You're not good enough. Um, you should give up. Um, you know, all the way from little things to big things to suicidal things. Um, they never told me to hurt anyone except myself. They would often, I did a lot of self-abusive things um, and to placate the psychosis and the voices um, because I wouldn't, didn't think I would find relief until I did them. Um, so I, I still hear voices now and then um, when I'm very stressed out. And so, um, in my recovery, um, the voices have changed. They're still there and they still say negative things, but they're counteracted by the positive voice dialogues that I've placed in my head over the past 15 years. Um, I've had to build up, I've had to build these internal dialogues that were never there that were more positive and and confident and um, very different than how I was feeling and being told most of my life and it's different than how my brain was wired um, I went through this as a young kid so my brain was wired to know oh yeah demons devils they're real you can touch them magic is real and um, and you, you will be saved one day. You know, your dreams can come true. And in the most dires of moments, um, 
something will save you, be it God or, or hopes and dreams and magic or something. Um, now I lost my train of thought. So my brain was wired for that belief because my brain was still developing. And it's, as an adult, I'm finding it very difficult. Um, my faith was rocked when much of my life I believed that no matter what I went through, God would take care of me. And, you know, like he takes care of the animals and the birds and the trees, I'll have something to eat. I'll have some place to stay. And if I don't, you know, God will take care of me. And, you know, I've been through so many bad situations where, where I thought I wouldn't, I wouldn't live through. And I prayed and prayed. And, and God helped me much of my life get through these things. And uh, I believed anyways. And those wishes upon wishes saved me. Um, but as an adult, as an adult, um, I went through this time where I wasn't getting food. I didn't, I couldn't get food and I couldn't get shelter. And I just felt like God wasn't taking care of me. And it made me look back through my life and remember all these other times in my life where I felt like God wasn't taking care of me. And it really rocked my faith because I feel like my faith is hardwired into my brain. It's what keeps me going. And, uh, it's what keeps me positive in knowing that I'm gonna, um, that I have purpose. And so lately my faith has been rocked knowing that, you know, these things, this magic in the world that I thought was real is not real. Or perhaps it's not real. And, um, it tears me up. Um, I find the closest thing to magic in this world is music. Um, I can stand on a stage with a guitar and cast a spell over the audience to alter their mood, to make them happy or reflective or sad or dance. Um, it's like a magic spell. The arts are, I think, the closest thing to magic there is. But. The thought that my wish might not come true, or my dream, or uh, really tears me up. And the thought that there isn't someone there watching over me, and I'm just here. Throughout my life, you know, I always knew. Um, God was watching me. I never felt alone. And um, I felt that the spiritual world was watching me. Um, I would do lots of shows where no audience would show up, but I would have such a great time at that show knowing that there was, God was there, the spirit was there. And, uh, and I still, that's why I don't mind being alone. I'm alone a lot, but I never really feel like I'm alone. And so with my faith, um, it's more difficult. And I've been, I've been searching for ways to reach out. And I miss believing in magic and God and wishing on stars and things like that. It was, even though, even if it wasn't real, it really motivated me to think if I keep working and keep going and keep going, maybe a wish will come true. And that's, a lot of that is what keeps me going, sadly, is that maybe one day a wish will come true. And it's hard for me to think that it might not. Um, So in my struggle with psychosis these days is not so much about fighting against the devil. It's about trying to stay grounded in reality. And I go for walks every day 
and I have to watch the world go by as it is and remember that this is there is there isn't magic and um, there's no genie that's gonna give me a wish um, which scares me because it's not so much that I want to wish it's that all those times when I've been in life or death situations and abusive situations it's like now I feel alone that I don't have someone I don't have that person by my side that I could say help and they would make a miracle and I would survive um, so staying grounded in reality is, is what I do for my psychosis these days if I'm very stressed out and I and I'm and I'm hearing things, um, that makes me think, oh, I must be very stressed out. <laughs> I'm hearing things, and it, it doesn't scare me as much. Um, seeing things um, doesn't really happen as much anymore, and I think it would shock me a little bit if I started seeing things again, and um, I would have to really check in with where I'm at in my recovery um, and dealing with my past. So, um, thanks for tuning in. And as I said, I can't reiterate enough that there are people who have psychosis and all their experiences are different. There are people who have psychosis who see shadow people, but those shadow people might represent different things uh, to them than they do to me. There are people with psychosis who dive very strongly into faith and religion. And, um, and though we might have had that similar things, it means different. Th Mine comes from my PTSD and from the way I was raised. Yours might come from something else. So a lot of my psychosis is religious based, where for someone else, um, they might see demons, but it might not be have anything to do with Catholicism or religion, you know, or um, so everyone's experience is very different and uh, but there are similarities and I find the best thing for me to do for my psychosis is to do grounding activities, which is going for a walk, walking with your feet in the sand in the water. Um, going walking through the woods and just being aware of your surroundings um, and then um, I do other grounding activities such as meditating and I check in with other people so I'm not isolating into my own world and um, and I see that they have lives going on and they have things that are happening and uh, it's not all about me <laughs> um, and it just puts me into this, okay, here I am in this world that is a reality. It might not have the magic that I want, but uh, I'm safe. And in the life that I've created here, um, I do feel a sense of safety, which keeps a lot of that at bay. Thanks for tuning in. Um, this is not a light subject. I hope to do more sub uh, videos on subjects like this. If you have ideas of things you'd like me to talk about, please leave them in the comments below. Uh, be sure to subscribe for more content. Um, I also have a weekly vlog that I post um, and that shows how I cope throughout the week with my various uh, disorders. And so be sure to like and subscribe and thanks for listening to me. And um, yeah, have a good day.